Hi and welcome to our new YouTube video in which we're going to build a slideshow. This project is going to be built based on three core technologies, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So I expect that you already know at least the basics of them. Alright, before we start building the project, I'm going to describe what it is all about. As you can see by default, the slideshow is running with some nice fade effects. Here down below we have a play pause button. If I click it then the slideshow will stop and also on the left and right sides there will be displayed two controls or arrows. Using them you can run the slideshow manually. If I click the play button and hover over the right or left sides then the arrows will be displayed and if I click any of them the slideshow will switch to the manual mode. It will no longer run automatically and also the pause button will be changed into the play button. Alright, so I think this project will be a kind of funny and interesting and you can feel free and use it in your own projects. Okay, let's go ahead and start to work on it. Here on the desktop I have created a brand new folder called slideshow in which I have another folder called images. It includes all the images that we're going to use throughout this project. Actually you can download the source files from the link in the description. They are uploaded on GitHub. Alright, let's go ahead and open up this folder in the VS Code. I'm going to create three different files. First one is going to be index.html. Then we need style.css. And also script.js file. Then go to the index.html file and create a basic HTML document. For that we need to place an exclamation mark and then press enter or the tab key. Let's go ahead and change the title. I'm going to insert here slideshow. Then I'm going to link CSS and JavaScript files. Let's open link tag and in hreference attribute indicate the name of the file style.css. Then down below, right above the closing body tag, open script tag. We need here source attributes and we have to indicate name of the file script.js. Alright, finally we have to run our project to the browser. For that I'm going to use a live server which is a great package and it allows us to run the project live in the browser without refreshing the page each time when we make some changes. So you can go ahead and install this package. Okay, in order to run a live server you can use a right click and then choose open with live server. Alright, let's go ahead and organize a little bit the text editor and the browser and then start creating the HTML markup. So the first element that we are going to create is a div which actually will be a container. It will wrap the entire content. Next we need another div. It will include the slideshow itself. So let's assign to it class name slideshow wrapper. After that I'm going to pass the left arrow into this development. So let's go ahead and open div. It will have two different classes. The first one is going to be a common class name for both arrows, control. And then I'm going to use an individual class name, left arrow. Actually those arrows will be created manually. We won't have any icons. So I'm going to pass here another div with the class arrow. And finally we have to insert here two lines represented by developments. So the first development should have classes line and line 1. Let's duplicate this line of code and change the class name. We need here line 2. Alright, that's it about the left arrow. I'm going to duplicate it for the right arrow and change the class names. 
we need here right arrow. As for the line numbers, we need 3 and 4. Okay, that's it about the arrows. Now I'm going to insert in between of them the slides, I mean the images. Let's open development with class name, slides. So each image will be wrapped by a development. Therefore, let's open it with the class names, slide and slide 1. Actually, we need to use those numbered class names because we are going to use them from JavaScript. Then insert here an image. Actually, I'm not going to use an alt attribute, so let's go ahead and get rid of it. And then select the image from the images folder. So here is our image. Let's go ahead and duplicate slide twice for now and change class and image names. We need here slide 2, image 2 and slide 3 and image 3. So right now we have three images but at the end of the day you can add as many images as you wish. It will work fine and won't crash the project. Okay. Finally, I'm going to create a play pause button. Let's open development right after the right arrow and assign to it class name play pause. So as the play pause button, I'm going to use the font awesome icon. And to do that, we have to grab the CDN link for font awesome. So let's go ahead and search for font awesome CDN JS. Then go to this link and then grab the first link from here. I'm going to open link tag. And then let's paste a link in the H reference attribute. All right. Then down below, insert I element with the class names FAS, FA dash play. All right. That's it about HTML markup. We have here images and also the play button right after that. Now it's time to start to write some CSS. Let's go to the style.css file. The first thing that I'm going to do is to create some reset styles. So let's select all the elements using an asterisk and set margin and padding as zero. Then select Slideshow Wrapper. Actually, I'm going to expand this element to the entire viewport. So let's set width as 100% and then height as 100VH. Actually, VH means that height will take 100% of the height of viewport. Right now, nothing much is happening here, so we need to add some more styles. We have to take care of the slide itself, so let's go ahead and select it. Let's set width and height both of them as 100%. And also, I'm going to set its position as absolute. It will allow us to place images on top of each other. So now it seems that we have here just one image, but in fact, the rest of the images are placed in the background on top of each other. All right, next up, let's take care of the image itself. So select IMG element. We need the same width and height for the image as well. So I'm going to inherit those two properties. I mean, width and height. And also, in order to make image look good, let's use object fit cover. And finally, I want to make the image a little bit darker. And to achieve that, I'm going to assign to its parent element black background. And then let's decrease the opacity for image. I'm going to make it 0.6. 
Okay, so I think that it looks much better. Now it's time to start to work on the left and right controls. As you remember, both arrows have common class names, control. So let's go ahead and select it. Let's set position as absolute. Then in order to make controls position work according to its parent element, which in this case is a slideshow wrapper, we have to use position relative. Next, I'm going to set the top position. Let's make it zero. And also define width and height. As a value of the width property, I'm going to use viewport width. It makes controls more responsive on different screen sizes. I'm going to use 15 viewport width. So it means that the width of control is going to be 15% of the width of the viewport. As for the height, let's set it as 100%. So right now control is not visible and in order to fix that, let's go ahead and change background color. In this case, I'm going to use RGBA value. So I'm going to pass here 92, 94, 97. And then as the value of opacity, I'm going to pass 0.6. So now, as you can see, we have here the control on the left side of the page. The second control is not visible right now because in HTML it is placed after the slideshow and therefore it ended up behind the slides. In order to fix that, I'm going to use Z index property. Let's make it 100. Now, at a glance, we have the same result, but in fact, both controls are placed on top of each other because by default for both of them, the left position is set as zero. So we have to take care of that. For the left arrow, we need left property to be set as zero. As for the right arrow, we need to make right position zero as well. All right, now everything works fine. Both controls are placed in the right way. The last thing that I'm going to do about the controls is to set type of the cursor as pointer. All right, now it's time to take care of the arrows. As we said, we have to create them manually with div elements. So I'm going to select all of them using the common class name line. First of all, let's make them visible. For that, we have to define width and height. I'm going to set width as 0.2 RAM. As for the height, let's make it 10 RAMs. And also define background color. I'm going to use here color DDD5D5. So here we have our lines. In fact, we have four different lines and in order to transform them into arrows, we need to rotate them. So let's go ahead and select the first line, which has class name line 1. I'm going to rotate it by 20 degrees. So for that, we have to use transform property. Then we need rotate function. And inside parentheses, we have to indicate 20 degrees. As you can see, the line is rotated, but it is partially hidden. So to fix that, I'm going to center the lines inside the control. For that, I'm going to use a couple of flexbox properties and values. The first one is going to be display flex. Then in order to center flex item horizontally, we need to use justify content center. As for the vertical centering, we need align items center. All right, now the line is visible and actually the arrow is centered. Let's go ahead and take care of the second line. We need to rotate it by the same degree, but with opposite direction. 
So let's go ahead and duplicate this code here. I'm going to change the class name. We need here line 2. And also we need negative 20 degrees. Alright, now we already have an arrow. But as you can see, lines are a little bit far from each other. So to fix that, I'm going to move them slightly using translate function. We need to move them according to y axis. So we need translate y with the value 0.35 rem. We need the same for the second line as well, but again with the minus sign. So let's copy it, paste it here and write here minus sign. All right. So now, as you can see, we have here the perfect arrow. Let's go ahead and do the same for the right one. Let's duplicate both lines. Then I'm going to change class names. We need line 3 and line 4. For the third arrow, we need a negative 20 degrees. As for the fourth line, we need just 20 degrees. Alright, so that's it about the controls. The last thing that we have to take care of is the play pause button. So let's go ahead and select this element. First of all, I'm going to take care of the position of the button because right now it's not visible. It ended up behind the slides. So let's set its position as absolute. Then I'm going to say bottom. 5% and then in order to center this element we have to set left position as 50% and besides that for perfect centering we need to use transform with translate x we have to move the element according to x direction and we have to pass here minus 50% So, this little technique allows us to center the element perfectly. Finally, let's use cursor pointer. Okay, so now the button is visible and it's centered. Finally, I want to make it look nice. So, let's go ahead and select eye element itself. Change the color of the element, make it white. And also increase the font size, make it 50 pixels. Alright, so right now we are done with CSS, all the elements are styled. And now we have to go ahead and start to write some JavaScript. Let's go to the script.js file. So at first we are going to run the slideshow automatically. For that we are going to create two different functions. The first one is going to be change slides actually I think it will be better if we split the editor and display the HTML file as well because we're going to select some elements using JavaScript DOM so I'm going to select all the slides let's create variable call it slide list in order to select a couple of elements which have the same class name we can use query selector all method let's pass here the class name slide actually when you select elements using query selector all method it returns an array like object called node list and in order to manipulate on that list as an array we have to transform it into array so let's go ahead and create a new variable I'm going to call it slides And now, in order to transform node list into an array, we have to use array.from method. And we have to pass here slide list. Alright, now I'm going to create a variable which will represent the current slide in the slideshow. I mean the slide which will be showing on the screen. 
The value of this variable is going to be changing. Therefore, we are going to use let declaration. Let's call this variable current and then set it as 1. So by default, the value of that variable will indicate the number of a slide, which will be currently showing. All right. So we have selected all the slides and stored them in an array. As you know, they have class names, slide 1, slide 2, and so on. So we have to loop through the array, get access on the second part of those class names, I mean the numbers, and compare them to the value of the current variable. If they are equal, then we have to show that slide, and if they are not equal, then we have to hide it. Okay, that's it what we're going to do. In order to loop through the array, I'm going to use one of the array helper methods, which is called for each. We need to pass here an arrow function with the current slide. So to get access to the class name, we can use a property called class list, which actually gives us an array of the class names. So I'm going to use if statement. Then as a condition, we need the following slide dot class list so as we said this property will give us an array of the class names in this case those class names will be slide and slide one we need the second item i mean slide one so we have to indicate the index number like one then after that we need to split this class name on the hyphen it will return another array in which we will have two items, slide and one. We have to grab the second item, which is one, so we need to indicate here the index number one. I hope it makes sense to you. So now we got access to the number of each slide, but in fact the data type of this number is not a number, it is a string. So we have to transform it into number, and we can do that simply by multiplying it by one. All right, so if this number equals to the value of the current variable, then we have to display the current slide. For that, let's insert here slide.style, and then I'm going to use property called CSS text, which allows us to use several CSS declarations. So we need here visibility visible, and also opacity 1. If this condition is false, then we have to hide the slides, so we need else statement. Then let's grab this line of code, make visibility hidden and opacity 0. Alright, that's it. We can call this function now and let's see how it works. So right now current equals to 1, therefore we see here the first image. In order to prove that I can hover over the image path here in index.html file. So you can see that this is definitely the first image. Actually if you want to preview an image this way you can install a package called image preview. Alright, if I change the value of the current variable, let's say to 3, then the third image will be displayed. If I check again in the index.html file, then we will find the same image. Ok, everything works fine so far. Now it's time to make the slideshow play automatically. For that I'm going to create another function. Let's call it play pose. So we need to change the slide after every 3 seconds. So we need to use set interval method. So the first 3 seconds, the first image will be showing. After that, this callback function will run. So we have to increase the value of current by 1. For that, let's use increment operator plus plus. And also we need to call change slides function. 
Finally, let's indicate here the interval. I'm going to set it as 3 seconds. And you need to express it in milliseconds. So we need 3000 milliseconds. All right, so as you can see, slideshow is running successfully. After the last image, the current value continues increasing. Therefore, we are getting here a blank page. So we need to use if statement in change slides function. So if the current value is greater than the length of the slides, we need to make it one again. So we need if with the condition current is greater than slides.length. If this is true, then we have to set current as 1. Now, as you can see, slideshow runs infinitely. Alright, so now we need to control the play pause button. By default, slideshow will run automatically, but once we click the pause button, then we have to stop slideshow. So we need to add a couple of things to play pause function. I'm going to create two different variables. The first one will hold a boolean value, which will help us to set up some logic. Let's declare a new variable, call it play pause boo. And by default, set it as true. Also, we need a variable called interval, which will store the set interval function that we used a minute ago. So we need to run the slideshow automatically if play pose bool is true. And otherwise, we need to stop it. So we have to use if statement, in which I'm going to check if play pose boolean is true or not. If it is true, we have to insert set interval function inside of if statement. And also, as we said, we have to store this function in the interval variable. And after that, we have to make the play pause bool false. Next, we need else statement. If play pause function was called the second time, then it means that the value of play pose boolean would become false. Therefore, the else statement will be executed, in which we need to clear the interval. And we have to set play pose boolean back to true. Alright, the next thing that we have to do is to attach a click event to the play pose button. So let's go ahead and select this element. I'm going to use query selector method, then use class name play pose and attach to it event listener. Let's pass here click event and then the arrow function. So inside this function we have to call play pose function. So now as you see slideshow runs automatically, but if I click the button, then it will stop. If I click again, then it will continue to work. All right, now we need to change the icon of this button when we click it. By default, we created a play button and we need to change it into a pause button when we click the icon. So we need to manipulate with two different font or some class names. F a play and F a pose. So I'm going to create a new function. Let's call it change play pose. Then let's go ahead and select the icon. Use again query selector method. Pass here class name play pose and then the I element. After that, I'm going to get access to the second class name, which is fa-play, 
And for that, again, I'm going to use a class list property. So let's create a new variable. I'm going to call it in a shorter way, CLS. Then we have to write here icon dot class list with the index number one. All right, so if the class name equals to FA play, then we should remove it and add FA post and vice versa. So I'm going to use an if statement. We have to check if class equals to FA play. If this condition is true, then we have to remove this class name. So we need icon dot class list and we have to use remove method with the class name FA play. And at the same time, we have to add to the element different class. So we need icon dot class list dot add FA dash post. So if this condition is false, if class not equals to FA dash play, then we need else statement in which we have to remove from the element class name fa pose and add to it fa play. So let's grab those two lines from here and just change the class names. All right, the last thing to do is to call this function and we have to do that in play pose function. So as you see, by default, we have a pause button because slideshow is running automatically. But if I click the icon, it will be changed back to the play button and also slideshow will stop. All right, that's it about this part. Next, we need to take care of the controls. When we click any of the arrows, then slideshow should stop and we should be able to change the slides manually. So first of all, we need to select the arrows. Let's start with a left arrow. I'm going to use again query selector method. Let's pass here class name left arrow. Then attach to it event listener with a click event. So on click we have to call the play pose function if the play pose boolean is false. Because when it is false it means that slideshow is running automatically. And once we call again play pause function, then it should stop. So we need an if statement. Then as a condition, we should check if not play pause boolean. Then we need to call play pause function. Also, in case of clicking the left arrow, we need to decrease the current value by one. So we need current with decrement operator minus minus and we have to call again the change slides function so if I click the arrow then we will get just a blank page it happens because the current value becomes zero and with zero we don't have any slide number so we need to avoid this kind of thing for that let's go to change slides function and add here else if statement we have to check if current equals to zero. If so, if this is true, then current should be equal to slides.length. Now if I test again, it will work fine. All right, we need the same for the right arrow as well. So let's go ahead and duplicate this code. I'm going to change the class name. We need here right arrow. In case of the right arrow, we need to increase the current value by one. So instead of minus signs, we need here plus plus. All right, so everything works fine. And step by step, we're going to the end of this project. But still, we have to do a couple of things in order to make our slideshow look better. So by default, when the slideshow runs automatically, controls should be hidden and we need to display them when we hover over the arrows. And also we need to display them once we stop the slideshow. So let's go ahead and go to the style.css file. I'm going to create a new class. Let's call it arrows v2. 
visibility. And we have to assign to it opacity 0. We will add and remove this class dynamically from JavaScript. Besides that, we have to make controls appear on hover. So we need control hover and set opacity as 1. And finally, let's make a hover effect nicer using transition. We have to insert here opacity, then the duration, 0.5 seconds, and also use one of the transition timing functions called linear. All right, that's it about CSS. Let's go back to JavaScript file. I'm going to create a new function. Let's call it arrows visibility. First of all, we need to select both arrows. Let's do that using again query selector all method. Both arrows have the common class name control. Then I'm going to loop through them and based on some condition add and remove newly created class arrows visibility. First of all, in order to loop through arrows, we need to transform node list into an array. You already know how to do that. We have to use array.from. Then we have to pass arrows. Then to loop through the array, we have to use for each method. Let's pass here arrow function with current arrow. So if the slideshow runs automatically, then we should hide the arrows. So we need if statement. Then insert here as a condition play post boolean. If it is true, then we need to add to class list of the arrow class arrows visibility. So we need arrow dot class list. Then we have to use method called add and we have to pass here the class name arrows visibility. Otherwise, if slideshow doesn't run automatically, we have to remove this class. So we need else statement. Then let's grab this line of code. Instead of add method, use remove. And finally, let's go ahead and call this function in play pose function. Alright, by default arrows are hidden. If I hover over them, they should appear. If I click any of them, the slideshow will stop running automatically and we will be able to change slides manually. Also, if I click the pause button, then arrows will be displayed. Okay, actually we are almost done. The only thing that we have to do is to add some fade effects to slides. I mean to add fade effects when the slides are changing. For that, in CSS, we need to add a transition to a slide. Assign to it opacity and the duration one second. And also in order to make fade effect darker, we have to change background color for slideshow wrapper. Let's make it black. All right, that's it. Congratulations, we have finished building this project. As you can see, everything works perfectly. Actually, I'm going to add here some more images. Let's duplicate the slide three times and change the class names. Also, we need to change the names of the images. Okay, so you're able to add here as many images as you wish. You just need to number the classes in the right way. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this project. If so, then please like the video, comment below, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified about every new video. Alright, see you next time.